So don't include interest earned on your IRA, Health Savings Account, Archer, or Medicare Advantage, MSA, or Coverdell Education Savings Account. So this question is probably something that would come up. It's like if you just make the returns by the forms that you get, you're going to notice, hey, I didn't get a 1099 interest or dividend forms for uh, accounts that are under umbrellas for a retirement account, such as an IRA, for example, could be the case. And if you just follow the forms, then you'll do the data input typically correctly. But you might have questions in terms of, well, why aren't I getting uh, forms with relation to some of these other accounts where I possibly have investments in them? And you might have to explain that to a client. And if you get to higher income tax preparation, then you want to start doing tax planning in terms of what money should you be putting into an IRA and why and that kind of uh, question. So remember that when you put money into like a retirement account, such as an IRA, 401k, 403b, uh, other types of retirement accounts or, or tax benefit type of accounts, it's not like the government is coming up with a new type of investment when you do that. You're not putting it into like a, a government you know, new miracle investment. No, you're investing in the same things you always would have. Typically, you're investing in stocks and bonds. You'd be buying stocks and bonds, mutual funds, just like you would if you didn't put it under a 401k plan or an IRA or anything like that. The only thing that those things are doing for you is giving you a tax benefit by basically giving you either a deduction or not forcing you to add the the money in income at the year of, dist of that you put it in and possibly not requiring you to pay uh, to pay taxes on the growth of those funds until you take it out right that's going to be the benefit you get to defer uh, the taxes is the general idea so so therefore if you put the your money under something that has an umbrella of a tax benefit then you might not have the same reporting requirements from the financial institutions to give you 1099, 1099 dividends and interest because possibly the 1099 dividends and interest are exempt, not because the investments are different, it's still in stocks and bonds generally, but because those investments are now under the umbrella of this tax exempt area where you're basically deferring uh, your taxes. That's why you put them under that umbrella and subject your investments to uh, to restrictions. You can't take them out as easily is the downside, of course. The plus side is you get a tax benefit. Okay, line 2B, taxable interest. So each payer should send you a Form 1099-INT or Form 1099-OID. Enter your total taxable interest income on line 2B, but you must fill in and attach Schedule B if the total is over $1,500 or any of the other conditions listed at the beginning of the Schedule B instructions apply to you. So we have an interest line as we saw when we started the presentation on the first page of the Form 1040. However, if your interest goes above a certain amount, which you might say, hey, that's pretty low, 1,500, that doesn't seem that high, but we're talking about interest income. So if, if you're getting interest, that is 1,500, you must have a fairly significant amount of investments in, in financial institutions, which is, which is why they might want more scrutiny on it because we're just talking about the interest, the earnings in uh, the one year period. So then you would include the Schedule B, which gives more information about the financial institutions. So for more details about reporting taxable interest, including market discount on bonds and adjustments for amortizable bond premium or acquisition premium, you can see publication 550. That's on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Interest credited in 2023 on deposits that you couldn't withdraw because of the bankruptcy or insolvency of the financial institution may not have to be included in your 2023 income. For more details, you can see publication 550. That's a more of an unusual situation. So if you run into that, publication 550. So instructions for Schedule B form 1116. This is foreign tax carryover reconciliation schedule. So just to drill down on this a little bit deeper. So part one, interest. Line one, report on line one all of your taxable interest. Taxable interest generally should be shown on 
uh, your Form 1099-INT, Form 1099-OID, or substitute statements include interest from, from the series EE, H, 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 uh, and I U.S. savings bonds. Also include any accrued market discount that is included in income and any gain on a contingent payment debt instrument that is includable in income as interest income. List each payer's name. Uh, and the amount don't report on line one any tax exempt interest. See tax exempt interest later for more information. For more information on stated interest, original issue discount, that's the OID, market discount, contingent payment debt uh, instruments and premiums, you can see publication 550 and publication 1212.